Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem A from the Code Forces Educational 51 contest entitled Vasia and Password. The problem is stated here, but it's quite lengthy and I'm not going to read through it. If you'd like to, pause the video and go ahead and do that. But the summary of the problem is that we are given a password and the password uh, needs to meet three criteria. It has to have an uppercase letter, a lowercase letter, and a digit. And if the password is not meeting those criteria, this problem asks us to uh, change the minimum number of consecutive characters uh, to any other character you'd like in order to make this password valid and return the valid password. You're not returning uh, the number of characters that you need to change. You're returning uh, a valid password. So there's going to be many valid pass passwords uh, when you're given an invalid one. You just need to return any arbitrary valid one that uh, uses the minimum number of characters that are changed uh, that are adjacent, that are next to each other. Um, so the constraints for this problem are that the number of test cases T is between 1 and 100 and the number of characters in our password S is going to be between 3 and 100. So let's take a look at the examples that CodeForce has provided us with. So here we have two examples, uh, two here, that's just T, the number of test cases, and we have these two passwords here. So you can see the second one, it has a lowercase letter, it has an uppercase letter, and it has a digit, so we don't need to change anything. Uh, but for the first password, uh, it has an uppercase and lowercase letter, but it doesn't have a digit. So uh, in the solution, it shows it's changed one of the characters to a digit. Um, so basically, we can break down our passwords into three cases. We're going to have uh, the case where all of the characters fall into one category, that either being uppercase, lowercase, or digit. So here it's uppercase. The second uh, case we have is where we have two categories satisfied, uh, but not the third. And then the third case is where we have all categories satisfied. So uh, our first password here falls into the second case, and our second password here falls into the third case. So for our third case, we're just going to return the password, nothing to do. Uh, but for our first two cases, we need to identify what's the uh, minimum number of characters that are consecutive that we need to change in order to make it valid. Um, so it's actually simpler than it might seem from uh, reading the problem. And uh, we'll start with uh, all falling into one category. So in this case, because we know that we have a minimum length of three for our password and they're all the same, we can choose any two adjacent indices and basically replace one with uh, each of the missing categories. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward, and the way we can do that is basically just store the indices and uh, for, for each category and uh, take the missing ones and then put them in two uh, random consecutive indices. And for the second case, all we need to do is identify the uh, character that has the majority uh, and the character that is missing, and then take one of the indices from our majority uh, sort of category and replace that with the missing category. Uh, so the way we can go about doing this and sort of get two birds with one stone is just to create a map of uh, vectors that store the indices for each category. Then we can check the size of our map. If it's size 3, don't do anything. If it's size 1, we know we need to uh, just replace two random consecutive uh, indices with the two missing categories. And if it's size 2, then we know we need to find the maximum category and the missing category and then do our work here. So for each of these three examples, the maps would look as follows. All of the indices here are in our first uh, key of our map. In our second example, we have two keys, zero for uppercase, one for uh, lowercase. And in our third example, we've got three keys. So you can see here the zero key value pair uh, corresponds to upper, uh, the one key value pair upper uh, corresponds to lower, and the two key value pair uh, two, two value pair corresponds to digit. So once we have this, we check the size and then we do the work. So uh, the mechanics of the problem are a little less clear than maybe one would assume, uh, but the problem is actually not too bad once you figure this out. So let's take a look at our code. So here is our code. Uh, it looks like a lot, but typically in a competitive coding situation, what you'll do is you'll code one of these lines, copy and paste, and just change a little bit. So even though it looks a bit verbose, um, it's actually not too many lines to type when you're in a contest situation. So at the top here, we're reading in 
uh, integer t, the number of test cases. Then we have our while loop for each test case t. We read in a string s. And then here we're declaring our map where the key is our integer and the value is a vector of integers representing the indices. Then we go through here and uh, construct uh, or initialize our map. And we're using the three functions is upper, is lower, and is digit. And we've mapped here uh, index zero or key zero, one, and two to each of those. Uh, so once we've done this, we come down and we check the size of our map. If it's one, we have to identify the category exists, which is just going to be the only uh, key value pair in our map. So we can just go m.begin and we just check which one of these it's equal to. And based on which one it's equal to, we just fill in two arbitrary consecutive indices. So here I used one and two. You could have used zero and one. It would have made no difference. And uh, when we have all uppercase, we have to change one to lower and change one to digit and so on and so forth. Uh, then when we have our size of our map equal to two, we need to identify uh, the, ma the majority category. Uh, and we can do that by constructing a lambda here that compares the size of the values. So second here is going to return us a reference to the vector of integers. And then if we uh, compare based on the size of those, it's going to basically return to us when we pass this lambda into our max element algorithm, the, uh, a basically iterator pointing to the key value pair where the, va the value has the largest size the value being the vector of integers. And so once we've gotten this, we can use the error operator second uh, with the bracket operators to basically get the first index of uh, one of the category, the characters that matches that majority character, uh, majority category. And uh, once we use this, we're going to basically replace that index with the missing category. Uh, so if uh, we have basically our zero key value pair being empty, uh, that means that we're missing uppercase. So we just replace the character uh, at index i with an uppercase letter. And we do the same thing for one and for two. And if the size of our map is equal to three, uh, we don't need to do anything because we know we have a valid password. So a lot going on here, but it's actually not too bad once you walk through it. Um, I was actually surprised that this was problem A. Uh, problem B is much, much simpler and has like three lines of code. Uh, so maybe those two should have been reversed. Uh, but yeah, a good exercise to go through this. Um, I saw some long-winded solutions in some of the other uh, submissions from contestants. And uh, I think the fastest anyone submitted this was five minutes, which is pretty surprising. Usually the best people for problem A, they submit in you know one or two minutes. Um, but yeah, last thing to talk about is the time complexity. And for this problem, it's going to be big O of t times s, uh, t being the number of test cases, and s being the number of characters in our password. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contest start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.